David, get up here. My wife and I are, are relatively recent uh, transplants to Houston. We moved here from Austin. And several years ago, when we lived in Austin, we have young kids, and she has friends who have young kids, and some of her friends lived in Dallas. And a couple weeks before Christmas, these were close enough friends where we would send presents to their kids, and they would send Christmas presents to our kids. And we get the box from her friends in Dallas, and we open it up, you know, to get the presents out, to put them under, under the tree. And oh, there's like seven or eight presents in there, and they're all addressed to Ben, love, grandma. Now, neither of our children are named Ben, and my wife's friend is not grandmother to nobody. So we call her up and we ask her, hey, what's up with the presents addressed to Ben, love, grandma? And she says, I have no idea, but I'll get to the bottom of this. So she says she'll go to the post office and figure it out. So I'm thinking to myself, what on earth are they going to know about it? <laughs> so she goes and comes back and says, well, I went down and asked, and it turns out they had no idea what happened. So... I'm thinking I know exactly what happened. I mean, we've all had some kind of boring jobs, and you do what you do to entertain yourself. And so I'm sure someone in the post office decided it would be funny to open up two boxes and just switch the contents. Ha, 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 very funny. Um, <clears throat> so we put the presents aside and just kind of let it alone. And weeks go by, Christmas comes and goes, and then finally it's getting close to, uh, to Valentine's Day. And I'm like, you know, well, crap, we never got the presents for our kids feeling a little betrayed here. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, well, before we go buy Valentine's presents for our kids, let's open these presents up and maybe there's something we can, you know, re-gift here. <laughs> so we open the first couple and they're the normal weird kind of grandma gifts you would think. You're not even sure really what they are. Open about the third present, it's a little stuffed bear, and I'm finally thinking, okay, that's something we can use. And the fourth present was some pajamas. I'm like, all right, they're way too big for my son, but, you know, he'll grow into them. And the whole time my wife is like, oh, that stuffed bear was for Ben. Ben's not going to get this stuffed bear. And, oh, the pajamas, he's not going to get the pajamas. And then there are two presents left, and they're kind of the big ones. And we open up the second to last one, and it's this sweater, this hand-knit sweater. We can tell because there's no tag and my wife was like, oh, Grandma knit that sweater just for Ben. <laughs> We've got to find Ben. And I'm thinking, oh, she's crazy. And then we open the last present, the biggest of the bunch. And it's this old blanket with this design of a fire truck. And there's a note. And it says, Dear Ben, this is the bedspread that was on your father's bed when he was a son, when he was a boy. And just as it covered and protected him, now it will cover and protect you. And so now, even I'm like, well, crap, we got to find Ben. <laughs> so we look, and all we have are the names Ben and Grandma. And that's not a lot to go by. <laughs> so we kind of keep pouring over, and one of the weird little trinkets, the weird little grandma gift kind of thing, on the back had a sticker that said, Spring Hill Hospice. So I do a Google search for Spring Hill Hospice, and the only thing I can find even close, there was a Spring Hill Day Hospice in this little town called Rochdale in England. And we're like, well, there's no way that's it. This was a box sent to us from Dallas to Austin. I mean, we could see the return address. And then my wife looks at the pajamas, and she said, you know what? I've never seen this brand of pajamas before. So we do a Google search for that, and it turns out it's an English brand of pajamas. So we're like, well, this is really strange. <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, what can we do here? So I find the Spring Hill Day Hospice website, and I email what happened. We took pictures of all the gifts. I email every email address that's on their website. You know, there's maybe 10. I got maybe two responses, both saying, sorry, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Then it occurs to me, well, you know, Rochdale is a pretty small town. I look it up. It's about 20,000 people, so I figure they have a relatively small newspaper. So I find their website, and I email all the editors 
uh, none of them are really willing to help. So then I start looking on their website, and I start emailing the reporters. And I finally find one email address of this reporter, and she said, all right, I'll run the story. So she runs the story, and I kind of figure, well, we'll see what happens. Weeks go by, I don't hear anything. And then finally I get an email from her, and she said, guess what? I think I found Ben. I sent them your contact information, and sure enough, the next day I get an email from a guy who lives in Austin. He said, I think you have my box. Can I come by tonight and get it? So he comes by, and then he shows there, and he, he has his son Ben with him, and he pulls me aside, and he says, you cannot imagine how much this means to us. My mom, grandma on the gifts, died December 23rd. And we were just beside ourselves trying to figure out what happened to this package. And he said what ended up happening is at the funeral, a friend of the family overheard me telling someone what happened to the gifts, and she was the one who happened to see the story, and that's how it all came together. <laughs>